Howdy folks, today I'm going to show you how to create and animate these simple map markers all inside of Adobe After Effects. It's a really dynamic technique that you can customize. I'm also going to show you how to create some animation presets so you'll be able to quickly apply these and build out your own library. If you'd like to download my project files as well as the animation preset that I create in this tutorial, follow the link in the video description to my Patreon page where you can learn more. Big shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Samir Mahdi, Joseph Culligan, Mike and Sandra over at YouTube at Flumi Plus One, and Josh. Thanks again, folks, for making this video possible. All right, for the first step, I'm going to create a new composition here, which I will call Simple Map Marker. And this is a standard HD resolution here, really long duration, which is what I want. Now, this is all going to be created in one individual shape layer, and it's going to consist of a few different shape elements or shape groups, three specifically. So it's going to be like two ellipses and a, and a simple poly star to create this. So I'm going to go click on the shape tool here, and I first we'll start with the ellipses. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool, and I'm going to switch the fill color to like a white. This is fine. Click OK. I don't have a stroke set up, which is perfectly fine. If you're new to working with shape layers, be sure that you follow the steps precisely here and you pay attention to what I'm doing because if you do one thing wrong, uh, things can go sideways quickly and you won't know what's going on. So to create an ellipse, I'm going to hold the shift key and then double click on the ellipse. This is going to give me this nice, perfectly centered and perfectly symmetrical ellipse. And you can see there's a new shape layer here. I'll call this simple map marker. Now it contains an ellipse shape group here, which has a path, a stroke, a fill, and transformation properties. You can see the stroke visibility is turned off because we didn't select a stroke. I'm going to click on the shape group folder here, and I'm going to hit enter to rename this. This will be our outer circle. And I'm going to change the size of it. So this size parameter is under the ellipse path, and I'm going to bring this down to 100. Now what I want to do is I want to have this to basically just I want to punch out a middle circle and then I want to have a little triangle arrow down here. So to do that I'm going to grab the outer circle and I'm going to hold control and hit D to duplicate it. I'll rename this one inner circle. So now we have this inner circle outer circle. This is exactly the same parameters here but there's two different groups now. So again don't get confused here. And I'm going to grab the inner circle group and bring it underneath the outer circle because there's a specific layer order here, a group order. The way you stack these is going to change the way that they look. Now what I want to do is I'm going to resize the inner circle. So I'll go down here to size. I'm going to set the pixels to 50 here. And you can see the size difference here. So here's the inner circle. And I'll click on the outer circle. There's the outer circle. Now how do I subtract the inner circle from the outer circle? Well, I'm going to deselect my shape groups. And I'm just going to click on the Add button here and go to Merge Paths. And this adds this merge paths, which consists of just a mode with a drop down menu here. But it also added another stroke and a fill after. So the way that the render order works is top to bottom. So things that are placed on the bottom will affect things on the top. So that's the reason I place the inner circle underneath the outer circle, because if I go here and I select subtract, now it looks great. It's subtracting the inner circle from the outer circle. If I grab the inner circle and place it above, whoops, I accidentally put it inside. If I place it above my outer circle, you'll see that that's not what we want. So I'm going to undo that. And be aware that you can actually drop shape groups into other shape groups. So that can mess up your render order as well. So now you can see if we change the size of this, I can change the look. So if I want a really thin map marker, I can bring it out here, change the size of this, but we'll just keep it at 50. Now I'm going to go up and grab contents again. And the reason I do that is I'm just deselecting the shape groups because anytime I add anything now, they're going to be added in those shape groups, which is one of the confusing aspects of this. To add the arrow now, I'm going to go up and grab the shape tool again, click and hold, and I'm going to select star. And again, make sure your shape layer is selected. Now I'm going to click and drag. That's going to add this shape. And at the bottom left, you can see there's a new polystar group. I'm clicking and holding and spinning around. And you can see this is a star, which is not what we want. We want a triangle. So I can change the points by hitting the up and down arrow. So if I go up, it's going to add extra points to my star. If I go down, it's going to subtract them. And if I go all the way down, it's going to do just a simple triangle here. Now if I want this, if I want to snap the rotation here, I'm going to hold shift and that'll keep it straight up. And if I want to move it, I can hold the space bar. Now I can move it over here. I'm just going to kind of roughly put it in place over here and it looks terrible. And that's because the merge paths is affecting the triangle, which we don't want. Well, we know that 
this is rendering from top to bottom. So if I just grab the Polystar shape group and I move it just underneath merge paths, now you can see it's not being affected by that. But it's kind of offset. We want to keep everything perfectly symmetrical, perfectly centered up. We can use overlays to help us place this stuff. So right down here is this button. Uh, we could do grids, guides, and rulers. So first, let's open up rulers. And rulers are going to allow us to add guides. So I can slide this out. This is a guide here. And I can right click on this guide and edit the position. Well, I want this to be perfectly centered up. And I know that the width of my composition is 1920 pixels. So I can type that in 1920 and simply divide it by two. That's going to perfectly center this guide up. I'm going to do the same thing with a guide up here. I know that the height of my composition is 1080 pixels. And if I hit a slash two, that's going to divide it by two, perfectly centered it up. Now that's all I need for guides. I don't want to move them anymore. So one helpful thing is you go to the view menu and you lock. And you also want your layers to snap to guides, so make sure that snap to guides is selected. One other tool that can help is the grid. So go down here to grid. Now I have this grid. I'm not going to use this quite yet. I want this triangle shape group to be centered up. Well, if you go down to Polystar, you can see that it has its own transformation properties. And right now the position is offset. You can see the X and Y here. If I zero out that X, watch this, it automatically centers up with my comp here, which is great. And now I can grab the Y, and this will move this on the Y axis here. So I can place this arrow right where I want it. We can see, however, it's inverted. So I need to go to the rotation here, and I'm gonna rotate it. I can rotate it using this parameter, or with the shape group selected, I can mouse over, and I can wait till I can see this little uh, rotation tooltip here, which can be a little finicky. And now I can click and drag. And if you hold shift, that's once, once again going to snap that to increments of 45 degrees. I like to make sure that it's perfectly symmetrical. So I use these. Let's bring it to like 60 pixels on the Y axis. Now you can see this triangle is a little too fat. We want to shrink it in here. So I could just unconstrain or turn off constrained proportions and play with the scale here. But I want to uh, you know, actually move the vertices of this. So to be able to edit the vertices of this, I'm going to go to the shape group path, right click, and convert it to a bezier path. Right now it's like a perfect parametric path, parametric shape, whatever they call it. After I click this, I can see these points here, and I can actually click on these points. And what I want to do, there's six points here. I only need the outer three to make this a perfect triangle. So I'm going to select these inner ones, and I'll just delete them because they're only going to cause problems. And now I'm going to turn on the grid. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move the position of these two vertices and make sure that they're right like one square from the center. So I'm gonna grab this one here and holding the shift key so that it stays on the x-axis, I'm gonna put it right over this line here of my grid, which is one square from the center. And then I'll do this same thing to this one as well. And now if I zoom out, you can see we have a nice symmetrical map marker. Voila, we're done, right? Well, we can do some other things, some additional things to help rig this. So now I'm going to grab all, look at all, this is kind of a mess here. So I'm going to grab all of this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to right click again, actually, because it's not doing, there we go. We want to see group shapes. So I'm going to group all these shapes together. And what that's going to do, it's going to put all these in a group, which gives us another transformation uh, group here. What I want to do is I want to have this thing bounce. I want to have it uh, be bouncing. So I'm going to grab the anchor point of this shape group and I'm going to put it right at the base of the bounding box here. And now I can go to the position of this shape group and I can add a keyframe. Let's bring that to the beginning. And I'm going to go to like the one second mark. We'll create a quick little animation here. So uh, over the course of one second, it's going to move up. So I'll move the Y position up like this. Let's turn off the grid. And now let, let's see what this is doing. So I created an animation here. It goes up. Okay. Let's speed this up by, by moving this in. Okay, so this is two simple keyframes. Uh, now we want this to repeat. So to have this repeat, I'm going to all click on the stopwatch and I'm going to type in loop out. And now you're going to see there's like an a autofill here. I'm just going to double click on loop out. That's going to add this. In the parentheses, if I type in like quotation marks, it's going to give me these four different modes. And I'm going to go down to ping pong. This is how the loop out is going to react. We want it to ping pong. We want it to go to the end and come back. Go to the end and come back. But as this is reading that, it's going to do that over the course of time. So now watch what this is going to do. Now this is going to bounce endlessly. However, it's these linear keyframes, so it's not looking great. So I can grab these. 
and keyframe assistant easy ease that's going to look a little bit better so now we got this smooth kind of bounce and once again if i want to speed it up i just bring the second keyframe in closer so it's a really dynamic way to adjust the animation of this marker okay so why did i animate this inside of the shape group well, I just personally like to do this because now I have the transformation properties of my actual shape layer to mess with, so I can parent this thing to a null or do whatever uh, I want to do. Now, the shape layer has its own anchor point, and if you look right now, it looks like it's positioned well. However, if we play the animation back, you can see that it, it's actually like bouncing down underneath that. So to fix that, I'm going to bring my playhead to the beginning, and now I'm going to grab the pan behind tool, which is shortcut key Y, and now I want to grab my anchor point and holding the control key, that snaps it to my bounding box. So I want to snap it to the bottom center of this. Watch what happens as this plays back now. Now it's bouncing from the anchor point, which is very cool. That's what I want. So now I can parent this to a null. I, you know, it makes it, it just makes the rig a little bit more dynamic. And actually I'm going to grab this. Now we want it to bounce up from the center point, perfectly symmetrical perfectly bouncing from the center point of our composition, which is great if you want to pre-comp this for, for whatever reason. Now, if you want to stylize this real quick, you could grab this, add like a bevel alpha. Uh, I could change the color here. So if we want it to be like a red marker, and then we can uh, crank up the bevel a little bit, change the position here, and now you've got kind of like a, a faux 3D look. Let's turn off the guides. I got a cool little map marker now. Now to turn this into an animation preset, all I got to do is grab all these here and then go to effects and presets, hit the little panel menu here and then here's save animation preset and I'll call this simple map marker. And that's a really cool way to, uh, let's say I create a new comp. I'm going to create a new comp here, blank composition, nothing here. Now if I go to effects and presets, animation presets, user presets, and then come down here to simple map marker one and double click it. It's going to add this and that those keyframes, if I hit you, those keyframes are going to be added wherever my playhead is. So be aware of that. If my playhead's way down here, it's going to add a layer across the whole thing here. However, the keyframes are going to be added at the playhead. Okay, to give this a little bit more depth, let me show you how to quickly create a shadow. So I'm going to go back to my original comp. I'm going to go to composition, composition settings, and I'm going to switch the background color to white just so we can see a little bit better. And to add a shadow, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab the ellipse tool and I'm gonna set the fill to this black color. And I'm gonna make sure that this simple map marker layer is not selected because I wanna create an entirely new layer. Now I'm gonna hold shift, double click to create a new ellipse. And now I will rename this shadow and I can open up the size here. And I'm gonna turn off constrained proportions and now I can just quickly resize this and the beautiful thing of this rig is that it's already set to the center of the composition, so I don't have to move the position here. Just kind of quickly tweak the size of this. Okay, so I have this shape, and I'm gonna grab it, and I'm going to add a drop shadow effect. And the important part here is you do shadow only. So you select shadow only, and then to center it up, you make sure distance is set to zero, and now you turn the softness up. So you can turn the softness to something like 22, and now just bring this shape layer underneath your map marker and now you have a shadow. So now it's looking a lot more, uh, a lot better. However, we want the shadow to have a little bit of movement as well. So I wanna match the movement of my map marker. So I'm gonna hit U to bring up these keyframes. And now I'm gonna go to, we can animate the size here. So let's keyframe this. And then at the top position, at its top point, let's actually constrain the proportions of this. Now I can scale it down like that. And it's important to make sure this matches. So I'm going to keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then I'll go copy. I'll copy the expression only, right click, copy expression only. And now I can go down to size and I can paste that expression. And now as long as all these keyframes are lined up with each other, which is very important, otherwise they're going to offset. Now we have this animation. and it's gonna loop endlessly, super cool. So now naturally you could, uh, add, you could create an animation preset for the shadow as well. The reason I don't add the shadow under this is because there's not an easy way to soften out or create a good looking shadow using uh, shape elements without effects. So it's a little bit difficult to do all in one shape layer. If you actually know how to do that, uh, let me know down in the comment section. And I can come back to this shadow. Let's bump down the opacity a little bit. So there you go, now you got a little map marker that you can quickly apply in your project. So let me know what you think down in the comment section. How would you have rigged this differently? I would love to 
hear it. And again, these are all shape layers, so you can you can really design the map marker to look any way that you want and create your own entire pack of like map marker presets. Super cool. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Once again, if you want to download the project files as well as this animation preset, head over to my Patreon page to learn more, and I'll see you next week.